Welcome guys and girls to the Brickyard, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Indy 500, the third round of the 1950 Formula 1 season. Opened in 1909, this is one of the oldest racing circuits in the entire world, but also renowned as one of the most dangerous and fastest races in history. Back in 1950, the 500 was of course part of the F1 World Championship, however no F1 drivers took part with uh, only Nino Farina attending but his car never actually arrived for the race. Uh, with all that being said, let's remind ourselves of the starting grid for today's race. So of course, last week we were at Monaco for what was quite a disastrous race uh, for me personally. However, Kimi Raikkonen got his uh, first win of the season, uh, followed by Lewis Hamilton and Alberto Ascari getting their first podiums uh, in second and third respectively. Jim Clark got a really, really great result in fourth after starting on the grid 16th from that race. Mika Hakkinen starts fifth along with Ayrton Senna in sixth. Nicky Lauda in 7th, Emerson Fittipaldi in 8th, Max Verstappen in 9th with Alain Prost in 10th, Nigel Mansell starts 11th alongside Sebastian Vettel in 12th, Fernando Alonso is in 13th and Jetson Button the last proper finisher uh, for Monaco in 14th. Then we have Michael Schumacher in 15th, he had a bit of an accident right at the end of the race in Monaco and 16th is myself, We, uh, if you didn't watch it of course go and watch that and watch the first round as well um, but we had a bit of a couple of accidents and we were a lap down uh, in the end and as a result of that we are starting right at the back but luckily for us there are also four other retirements from Monaco because of crashes or whatever and those are Nico Rosberg, Graham Hill, uh, Manuel Fanjo and Jackie Stewart will be starting from the back because he was the first of those four retirements. So we are in for a good race and let's have a quick reminder of our top five in the driver's standings then. So Kimi Räikkönen currently top with 14 points. He's set out a really good pace and an early title contender uh, for this 1950 F1 season. Second place myself with 10 points. I managed to get the win in the first round and obviously didn't score any points for Sil um, Monaco but we got the fastest lap point anyway. In third place, surprisingly sneaking in there, Lewis Hamilton with 8 points. In fourth place we have Mika Hakkinen and we have in fifth place Jackie Stewart. So we have 20 laps to complete of this extremely fast speedway and I'm sure we are all in for a great spectacle of racing. So fasten your seatbelts and let's get into this. So here we are then on the grid for the Indianapolis 500 or shall we say the Indianapolis 20. We're back in the Alfa Romeos. Uh, we were thinking about changing the cars for this race because the, uh, the actual uh, 1950 race used Indy cars and we're obviously in F1 cars and I decided that we'll just stick to the cars that we've been driving. And uh, also, if you're aware of Indianapolis, you know the Yard of Bricks. And as you can see, there's bricks everywhere. Back, back at this time, there was about five-eighths of a mile on this straight that was just purely bricks. What you see nowadays is what's left of that. And uh, I believe at some point, most of this was, uh, was just bricks. Uh, but obviously, as you can see, starting 16th, I've got Michael Schumacher on my left. And also to note, this is the first race I've ever done with this new gear stick. You might have heard it there, but uh, certainly a lot quieter than... <laughs> so we won't be using paddle shifters, only gear stick from now on. And uh, done a bit of practice with it, I'm still not completely comfortable, but with the slower cars like these, it's not, it's not bad. Um, but for cars such as the <laughs> Lotus 98T, it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, as I don't drive in real life, so using a gear stick for the first time, uh, it's quite it's quite uh, different, really, and a lot more challenging. But it makes you appreciate what these guys did for real uh, a little bit more. So anyway, enough talking. I think we should go racing. So uh, yeah, here we go. Okay then, the lights are about to go. 
Here we go. Must remember. There we go. We've got a decent start, but it seems like everyone else has struggled. That's the first time I actually started from the um, line with the skier stick. So that was uh, completely new to me. We got to a decent start. So we've got a few cars behind us, of course. It's been a race. But I've only, I've done a couple of races here before, which I've featured on my channel. One of them is uh, 1969. That was a really fun race, and I'm hoping for more of the same. But I feel like the car in front of me is getting away from me, which is not good. Right, now we're catching. Good. I really do love racing on the circuit. Now, I'm not a huge fan of oval racing. Um, but doing this, and oh, there's a huge crash in front. Don't know who that was. I think that was one of the uh, uh, one of the modern drivers. That could be Max Verstappen slamming into the wall there. So we're about to make a nice overtake. There we go. But the sheer speed of what we do. Um, so I'll try to concentrate. He's going to the right. Now this is racing, I love this. And I'm trying to throw the car into the corner. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's no usable mirrors so I'm having to really look around my surroundings. Alright, can we go into this corner now? Nope. Oh maybe. You just keep there sunshine. See this is what I love about oval racing, you really do get this pretty much most of the time. We take the inside line, we take the position. I'm not sure what my position is. I think it's about 8th or 9th. I did look at the pit board last time. And uh, we are come. P7. Okay. This is Max Verstappen in front of me. And I just took over it and said, I'm sorry. But we've uh, made up nearly 10 positions already, which is a really good recovery. And it looks like the classic team drivers are currently in the lead, so it could be either Jim Clark or Alberto Ascari. How fitting would it be if it was Jim Clark? So far, so good. I was expecting it to be slightly um, more hard, more difficult than this, to be honest. But uh, to be fair, there's a lot of slipstream, and when cars start getting more gaps established, then I'm sure it'll get a little bit more tricky. So we're P5 now, and this is keeping Rocket in front of me current championship leader so P5 um, in the points again so it's two points at least that's if I don't mess up which I'm sure I will at some point we, uh, I'm sure we're going to get a nice slipstream here we go to the left of him maybe not come on why is it Wonderful. This is great. This is always what I want to do when I'm oh, wrong gear. Sim racing. And that is just side by side. Sheer speed and just the thrill. So 
Hey, 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 hey. You be careful. And uh -huh. ah, we got the position. Hopefully we can keep it. I think we can. So this is Emerson Fittipaldi in front of us. And that was Max, Max Verstappen. What was Kimi Raikkonen? <laughs> clearly... Clearly... Ooh, ooh. There's a wall there. So I wonder what happened to Lewis Hamilton. Maybe he was the guy that we saw crashing earlier. This is... Uh, ooh, I'm not sure who this is. Oh yeah, it's just bad, of course. <laughs> Didn't really want to be on the outside. Oh, that's why. There's a big group of cars behind me, so if I do mess up, I'm, I'm screwed. It looks like Jim Clark and Ascari are battling for positions. Nice if we caught up with them. But, uh, apologies if I keep coughing. Uh, I'm still in that sort of recovery phase from having COVID. I'm still very flammy at the moment, and that hasn't gone away, but I'm feeling a lot better. Hopefully that's um, noticeable for you guys, because I know Monaco, I really struggled. When I uh, was editing that video and I looked back on it, I just was like almost shaking my head because of how bad I sounded. But, uh, oh well. Oh no. A little bit of... Uh, who came out then? Right, we made a little bit of a mistake there, so we had to top down to second. Normally with this, I'm just mostly a third and occasionally fourth. Like, fourth. But uh, I'm, I'm getting used to the um, gear stick. At first, I found it really difficult. Um, because it's just such a so different from what I'm so I'm used to. You get what I mean? So um, and then yeah, just sort of going through the um, different kinds of cars, different eras, and all that kind of stuff. And um, eventually got to like the Lotus 98T at Adelaide, and my word, that was a challenge. Especially when you got to the end of the main straight at Adelaide and then you had to go from 6th to 1st so quickly. Oh, we we'll hit the wall again. Um, if you know about it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've seen so many onboard footage from just Adelaide and how quick they go for the gears. I'm just, and I was doing the same. I, I pretty much messed up the entire time. I, I, you, my breaking point was so much more um, forward than normally, so much more early. And uh, yeah, it was crazy, but really, really good fun. It does make it a lot more fun, um, especially with historical cars like this. You really do get a feel for what it's like to drive this thing. You feel more in control because obviously up until now, I've been using paddle shifter to control these kind of cars and all the other historical F1 cars up until 1990, whatever. But uh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic, loving it. Now, we've been trying to fight Emerson Fittipaldi here. Again, one of my heroes. Who I haven't met yet. I was hoping it would be a good one this year, but he uh, wasn't. We try and go to the, the inside. We're almost halfway through this race now. We go side by side. They almost high five each other. Bye. <laughs> right, where's my gear stick goes? Right, hand on the gear stick. Oh, hello, okay. He's gone now, I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Okay, we've got a couple of other cars also in the fray. Now, this is a fight. 
See, they keep breaking. In practice, I wasn't breaking here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is so much fun. This is great. I don't know who this is. I think it might be Cross. I have a teammate. And it is, it's Alan Prost, or Alain Prost. Broke a little bit earlier than I wanted to there. But I was worried about going into the back of Everson. Don't know where Alain is, he's quite close behind me. I just spot him in the, uh, in the mirrors. And obviously as I'm in this little battle, Jim Clark and Ascari are slowly getting smaller. They're just little dots for me now. I don't think anyone's retired, and with that I'm very surprised as I'm getting somewhat squeezed into a wall. Okay, Frost has backed off a little bit, so I've got a little bit of uh, breathing room to continue fighting with uh, Emerson here. Let's try and go on the inside. Full throttle, nice. He's still alongside me though, I'm giving it everything I can. Look at him go, this is, this is great. This is what I want from this game. I'm sorry, this ain't the game, this is real life, of course. So it is, ah, it's Alberto Ascari who's currently leading. <gasps> Look, Jesus. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen car gets so close in this game. Literally, you could, couldn't even fit your middle uh, middle finger in that. My wheels were so close. He is faster than me, I can tell. Uh oh. Something went wrong there with my gearbox. So sometimes when I do change gear, sometimes it just doesn't change gear. And it just gets stuck in neutral or something. It's really annoying. Right, so we're now in third, so now we've got the podium position. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look behind them just yet. Still behind me, so it's still a threat as we know. We're just over halfway through this race now. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. This is a fantastic race, which we still have a chance of winning if we do try and push even more. We can uh, catch up to Alberto Ascari and Jim Clark, who's ahead of us. Jim Clark is in second, Ascari is currently leading, but uh, they're so close to each other, it can go either way. Pitbull gets shown just so that I have a bit of reference. I didn't really check on the time his last lap. Um, so yeah, I think we're about four or five seconds behind them, I would I estimate. Okay, okay right. seven. Seven seconds. And uh, I think Sebastian Vettel is behind us which is very shocking because considering he started near the back what oh my oh my So wish me luck for Monday and Tuesday um, here in the UK. It's going to be pretty much the hottest day on record. 
and I'm working. So I work in a warehouse. And the warehouse has no um, air conditioning. There's like two tiny windows you can open and that's it. A little bit of distance away from uh, the guys behind us, which is which is good. But uh, yeah, I went out today this morning because uh, it was my friend's birthday, and he got a uh, driving experience at Dunsfold Aerodrome, where the Top Gear test track used to be. He drove a uh, Ferrari 458 uh, Lamborghini Huracan. And uh, what was the last one? Oh, yes, McLaren 570S. And I was absolutely baking. Uh, towards the end of the day, I just felt ill. <laughs> I just really felt ill. So I got home and went to have a little bit of a rest. I ended up sleeping four hours, which I wasn't happy about. I was like, God damn it, I wasted the whole day. And then I worked out, I was like, well, it would have been the same as if you woke up at 10. I'm like, well, that's normally what I do anyway, so, alright. So they get up early for him. Trying to get trying to get some good photos of him. But I didn't expect the uh, spectator areas to be so far away from the track. I couldn't really get any good photos, which was a shame. Got a few, but uh, yeah. But uh, one day, one day. And hopefully one day I'll get to go on the um, F1 experience in the Jordan in 2002. Jordan F1 car, V10. Well, that'd be, that's the dream. That's the dream right there. Or well, anything from this era. I would love to drive something like this in real life. Really would. Come on. Thank you. Alright, we're slowly catching these guys. See, I want to have a good result here because next week we're at Bremgarten. Now, Bremgarten is a very tricky track. It's super fast on what is essentially tight, narrow country roads. And I've done a few races there before, and nine times out of ten, I crash. But it's so fast. It's a fun track, it really is. It's one. Uh, my most enjoyable tracks available out there but um, and good looking but um, yeah it, it is insane and uh, I know for a fact when I did this before like a year ago the um, I, I crashed out of that one so yeah so I kind of know what to expect really Coming up to Jim Clark now. Of course, Indy 500 champion in 1965. I think it was 1965. <laughs> I think, yeah, same year he won the um, F1 driver's title and the Tasman series. I, I will be doing a video on Jim Clark at some point. He is just, for me, one of my favourite drivers of all time. As we overtake him. Thank you, Jim. But probably one of the greatest drivers to ever live. Just about hearing him now. He acknowledged my comment. Okay, he's on right. Somewhere around there. We've got Alberto Ascari in the lead. I don't think we would have had um, as good of a race if the um, start wasn't as good as what it is. It was good for me, but all the other cars just got off really slowly. That's never happened here before. Don't know where uh, Clark is. Come on. Alright, it's quite a distance away, so we should be fine. And of course, Sebastian Vettel and all the rest of the guys behind me are long gone. So it's just us three now. Uh, there's a nice river over there as well, <clears throat> like a little stream. 
a swig of my drink because it is roasting in this room. Where's the cup holder? Cup holder. I had to lift off there because I was like, hang on, I need to change gear. My right hand is occupied. That sounds wrong. Buy a can of drink, okay? You sickos. Full power, can we make it? Ooh, man, that was quite a little bit of breaking. <laughs> of course, I have no idea who's got the fastest lap. Car is still behind me. Also, I haven't seen any retirements, which is very surprising. Did the whole lean thing. Ow! That's the microphone. <laughs> I love doing this in cars from this era, just leaving out like they used to. Even for 1950, these are ridiculously quick. See, just this blur from all these people that are watching. So, Ascari is currently four and a half seconds in front. I am slowly getting away from Jim Clark as well. I have a sneaky suspicion we won't be able to catch up to Ascari. We might have a small chance but that's it but we're coming up to back markers I can just see whether we're going to encounter them towards the end of the race or not remains to be seen Up 19 of 20. We are still catching uh, Ascari, but uh, it seems like a second per lap. We've only got two laps left, so I don't think we're going to be able to catch up to him. So I think second will probably be best for us right now. Unless a back marker can change all that because we are catching up to them. I'd love to do an Indy 500 but with plastic cars like this. Not exactly like this, probably like an Indy Roadster from the period or something like that. I think that would be absolutely awesome. I'm gonna get you. Come and get you. Not really, because my car's slow. And you're quick. Let's see, from here they don't look like they're going quickly, but obviously being here in this car, totally different feeling. I feel very fast right now. Right, last lap now. Probably second place is all we're going to get. But uh, it's been a really, really enjoyable race. All those battles we had with Fittipaldi and Frost and Senna and Clark. I mean, Clark didn't really put up much of a fight, but uh, Fittipaldi did. And that was really fun. Probably my favourite race of the season so far. I know it would probably be eclipsed with uh, all the places that we're going. Especially the next three races we have Brent Garten, uh, Spa, and then we've got Rams. So uh, ultra fast classic circuits. And we are actually getting very close to Ascari now, but uh, we probably won't be able to make the overtake at all. Uh, but if we had about three more laps or something, we probably could have uh, done something. But um, oh well, second place is all we can muster.
And across the line, in second, there's confirmation. Brilliant race there. Really, really was enjoyable. And there we go, we're going to teleport into the pits. Wow, that was a fantastic race. Really, really enjoyed that. So let's have a look at what the finishing positions were. So there's confirmation. Alberto Ascari, winner of the 1950 Indy 500. Myself settling for second place and Jim Clark finishing in the last podium position in third place. <coughs> in what is a really surprising result, Sebastian Vettel finishes fourth and scores his first points of the season and after starting way down near the bottom so fantastic result for him Alan Prost finishes fifth in the last points finishing position Fittipaldi in sixth Nigel Mansell in seventh Jackie Stewart really disappointed result for him in eighth and Ayrton Senna in ninth Schumacher in the middle in tenth for Dickinson recovery drive for him Nicky Lauda in 11th Fernando Alonso in 12th Kimi Raikkonen current championship leader 13th really really disappointing result for him Nico Rosberg in 14th Fangio in 15th Max Verstappen 16th a terrible result considering where he started in 8th in the start of the race Jensen Button 17th his poor start to the season continues Mika Hakkinen and Lewis Hamilton 18th and 19th some terrible result there for them to considering they started in the top half of the uh, uh, grid and Lewis Hamilton started second and finished 19th he must have been involved in some sort of crash and Graham Hill in 20th as well uh, so let's have a look at the uh, driver standings then so there's the current world driver standings after round three then Myself retaking the lead with 17 points after 9 points were scored from that race. Kim Raikkonen drops down to 2nd with 14 points and Alberto Ascari is in 3rd with 12 points. Hamilton keeps 4th with 8 points and Jim Clark is now 5th with 7 points. Uh, elsewhere, Mick Hackman with 5, Jackie Stewart with 4. Uh, Sebastian Vettel now has 3 points, his first points of the season. And Aaron Pross with uh, two points, and the rest of the grid still yet to score their first points of this season. And of course, the, their first points of the historic F1 season. Some of them have had uh, some great races, some of them haven't. Well, then, I think that was a fantastic third round. I thoroughly enjoyed that. The way the car just went round, the speedway so easily, even though it's not even a car built for that kind of thing. That was an incredibly fun race and obviously the first one with this new gear stick and that was incredibly enjoyable and I uh, cannot wait for the rest of the season. Uh, next week we're going to be at Bremgarten for the Swiss Grand Prix and like I said an incredibly fast uh, street circuit essentially on tight and narrow country lanes. It's going to be really fun we're going to expect to see some uh some times there well, i mean to be fair we expected some for this race but they never never showed up um but brem especially and probably will involve me uh as brem is a very challenging circuit but probably one of my favorites really good track so you should go out there and download it anyway anyways guys that was round three i really hope you enjoyed this much as i did and if you did leave a like and subscribe if you're new comment as well what is your favorite part and uh what your predictions for bremgarten i'd love to hear them and um yeah so i'll see you probably during the week i'll probably do another video before the um fourth round of bremgarten uh but until then i hope you have a lovely week in this lovely weather and i'll see you in the next one